nuclear facility, areas exposed to radiation are most often located in what we call controlled areas. Workers entering such an area must wear special clothing and protective gear. Their profession, activities, and work methods are inconceivable without some form of radiation protection. Fresh fuel elements are regularly delivered to nuclear power plants. Once removed from their packaging, they are thoroughly checked. The fuel is composed of rods. The pellets containing enriched uranium are stacked in each rod. Uranium is only slightly radioactive. The radiation emitted by uranium can be blocked by a sheet of paper, which means it cannot go through the thickness of the tube. Technicians can therefore handle fresh fuel without having to use bulky protective shielding. Every year, the spent fuel is replaced by new fuel in the nuclear reactor. The fuel has provided energy for three or four years in the reactor, and its composition has changed radically. It now contains a complex mixture of uranium, plutonium, and other very radioactive products. Handling, or even getting close to this fuel, is out of the question. Only thick screens of lead, steel, and concrete, or water, are capable of attenuating this radiation. In a nuclear power plant, spent fuel is unloaded under five meters of water in a reactor pool. Water has a dual-fold purpose. It not only cools the fuel assemblies, which are very hot, but also efficiently protects the technicians against radiation. The spent fuel is then transferred through a hatch in the bottom of the reactor pool into a shielded container called a transport cask, which protects the personnel and the public against radiation during its transport to the fuel reprocessing plant. The spent fuel is removed from the transport cask in the fuel reprocessing plant. See how different the operation is? Spent fuel is handled underwater in a nuclear power plant. Here, the fuel is unloaded in air. It is impossible for the workers to do this manually because of the radiation. The operation is therefore fully automatic performed remotely from behind thick, lead-coated glass windows. The spent fuel is found in liquid form after it has been subjected to a mechanical and chemical treatment. All the non-recyclable radioactive products are separated from plutonium and uranium before being mixed with glass and poured into stainless steel drums. This is called vitrified waste. These drums are extremely irradiating and must be handled remotely in a lead-shielded cask. They are stored under a thick concrete slab for some time before being transferred to ventilated pits. Several options are currently being investigated for the long-term management of such waste. The Brennellis nuclear power plant in Brittany no longer contains any fuel. It was shut down in 1985 after having operated for 18 years. It is currently being dismantled. The fuel has been removed, but a danger of another sort still remains. The radioactive pollution of pipes, valves, and all the equipment to be dismantled. Each color indicates a different level of exposure. Work sites are prepared by installing leak-tight vinyl enclosures to delimit the work areas and to confine radioactive dust produced by the dismantling operations. The operator's white cotton overalls are replaced by leak-tight work suits to limit the risk of contamination as much as possible. Contamination by contact with the skin and contamination by the inhalation or ingestion of dust. Even the measuring devices are protected so they can be reused for other dismantling operations. Being distanced from the sources of radiation limiting the residence time in areas of risk, and using protective screens are all part of the practices, methods, and conduct of the workers 
regardless of their profession in nuclear power plants. Whether working in a controlled area with gloves, above a screen of water, behind a shielded window, or in a leak-tight suit, all these professionals are at risk of being exposed to radiation. For this reason, they wear a dosimeter to measure their personal level of exposure. It is an essential tool to radiation protection, since it monitors that personal exposure levels do not exceed the regulatory limit. In high-risk areas, workers even wear two dosimeters. This one is qualified as passive because it functions like a photographic film that is exposed throughout the operation. It is developed once the job is finished. This one is said to be active, since it displays the exposure level in real time and can sound the alarm when pre-programmed exposure thresholds are exceeded. Zoning, signage, protective suits, and monitoring of individual exposure levels together with training, all help ensure the best level of occupational safety. For 50 years, the experience progressively accumulated in the field by nuclear professionals, together with technological improvements, has helped develop a radiation protection culture that implicates everyone in the never-ending quest to reduce exposure levels.